Okay, welcome to the next one in our line of GCSE Eurovision videos. Uh, today again we're talking about settlement, we're focusing on settlement, and uh, we're going to look at the idea of land use, okay? So a quick little bit of history. Uh, two urban models really exist about land use that we'll have covered in your lessons. The first of these is up here, and it is the Burgess model. Um, Burgess's Cohen-centric zonal model, to give it its like full name, I think that's what it's called. Uh, basically, the idea, obviously, that an urban area is in sort of circles, basically. Uh, you've got the CBD in the middle, then you've got the inner city, then you've got uh, low sort of low quality housing, medium quality housing, and the highest quality housing on the outskirts. Okay, so sort of terraced, and then semi-detached, and then your detached um, large housing on the edge. Okay. And then on the outskirts of it, you then have your rural urban fringe that cross over between the end of the city and then your uh, countryside area. Okay, um, that was followed by this. All right, Hoyt came up with this idea, and again, you've got the same sort of zones, but rather than being in circles, he said they were actually in sections. Still have the CBD in the middle. Okay, but then you've got like uh, an industrial zone, much like this red zone. Okay, you've got your like inner city where your factories would would have been. Okay, he has the same sort of idea. Um, he's then obviously got his two zones of housing, and then this band of sort of uh, high class, slightly like, detached housing running right from the edge of the CD, CBD out towards that rural urban fringe, okay? So as part of your revision, be aware of those two zones, okay? Be aware of sorry, those two models and the zones that they represent. So if we bring this up, Okay, so what, what would you expect to be asked about? Well, possible questions about the features of particular zones, okay? So our CBD is very much our, our city centre to you and I, our central business district, okay? Uh, home to a lot of pedestrianised areas, as you can see in the picture. Think about Lincoln High Street, for example. Um, also home to a lot of shops, a lot of offices. Um, it will have small amounts of residential in, but that will tend to be like apartment blocks, okay? And a, a heavy student population in our CBD, because often we have like our university universities located there, okay? But yeah, shops, offices, banks is another example, building societies are the sorts of um, businesses and industries that are located within our CBD, okay? Um, our CBD tends to have the highest land values. So if you've got a question about like, who tends to locate the CBD, it is often our, our brand name shops and our high street banks, etc., because they can afford those higher land values. They can afford the rents, the high rents that come with owning a shop in the CBD, okay? Uh, the other aspect, about obviously why they want to be in the CBD is because all of your transport routes, your main transport routes, will often uh, end at the CBD. They will all come to the CBD. And they know that of any sort of urban area, if you think of those zones from the previous slide, this is where everybody will come to like do their shopping, to socialise and so on and so forth. It's the most popular area. So they know that if they locate there, they will be able to make the biggest profit. Okay, so that's CBD. If they got you in the city, would have been your old industrial areas, you'll probably still find like uh, old run-down factories and warehouses there. If they haven't gone through an area of redevelopment, a period of redevelopment, you'll also find a lot of this, okay? Terraced housing, think areas like Monks Road in Lincoln, just off that CBD, that sort of strand of terraced housing that runs away from the CBD uh, down Monks Road there. Um, and again, a lot of on-street parking, uh, your lowest sort of, your lowest quality in the nicest way, your lowest quality housing in terms of what's that terraced housing, also your lowest priced housing tends to be there, okay? Uh, you've then got, if I just come to this side, your suburbs, okay? So heading out somewhere like Bulfham Park would be a good example, uh, somewhere like the Birchwood would also be a good example of areas that are suburbs often, all right? Wider roads, wider pavements are features here, um, and you will have obviously semi detached housing like this tended to be built sort of between the wars, so between World War I and World War II, and also immediately after our suburbs continued to grow. A lot of garden spaces usually have front gardens, usually have back gardens, and so on and so forth. And then finally, okay, you would have uh, the suburbs obviously extend right out, and the further into the suburbs you go, the further out of the sort of urban area you go, the more modern our housing gets, until we get to the rural urban fringe, okay, where we've got probably our newest housing developments, okay, um, think of areas like South Highcombe, um, particularly the new developments down in South Highcombe, if you know where they are, um, 
that's an ex a good example of like housing developments on the rural urban fringe, but our, our most modern housing tends to be located there. Um, in the inner city, you tend to get obviously small, uh, small sort of corner shops, small um, like low grade services, for example, um, like things like laundrettes, things like uh, takeaways, um, maybe sort of small chain shops and small independent shops. Okay, the odd sort of small independent DIY store. Uh, your suburbs and your rural urban fringe, you would often find your supermarkets are located there, um, large supermarkets on the rural urban fringe, smaller supermarkets like the spas, like the co-ops, okay, uh, and again you'll find some little parades, we'll get to this in, in the shopping video, okay, but obviously your land value um, it is highest in the CBD and then it steadily increases as you move outwards, okay, so be aware of land use, be aware of obviously who locates where uh, in terms of characteristics of the CBD, characteristics of the suburbs, characteristics of the inner city and characteristics of the rural urban fringe. Okay, A lot more open space in the rural urban fringe. Um, but also your your highest quality, your highest uh, priced housing, because obviously it is on that rural urban fringe. Um, you've got obviously your access to the CBD, but you've also got a lot of open space. People perceive it as being safer sometimes than like suburbs or your inner city areas. Okay, uh, so be aware of what the characteristics are and why people locate there. Okay, so remember your four zones. Remember the characteristics. Um, tends to be sort of two and four mark questions. Um, you might get a, a photo of like a city centre that says just describe two features of the CBD or explain why many shops and businesses want to locate in the CBD. Okay, um, but or another good one is when you get an OS map and you've got like a, a some sort of industry and it's asking you what are the reasons and look for how close are they to the nearest sort of housing area for a workforce. How close are they to something like a university for skilled sort of apprentices? How close are they to a transport network so that people can get into and out of that uh, area quite easily? Uh, are they on the rural urban fringe so that they've got room to expand should they need to? Okay, look at, always look at the map closely and look for the features that would tell you about the location, okay? Um, and I think that's about it, okay? Uh, we'll look at the idea of problems within MEDC urban areas on another video, okay? Brilliant.